This shoe is a culmination of everything I've worked towards for the past 10 years. It's called the race model and I want to tell you a story about why it was made. But we're going to need to flash back about 10 years to when I was 26 years old. My mom calls me up and she had, you know, let me know that her friends were telling her that I was falling off my bar stool and my mental health wasn't so good. That really, really hit me hard. And that's when I knew I only had one place to go to keep going, and that's sobriety, cold turkey. I ended up getting some help from a friend who told me to go see a guy, check out an AA meeting, and begin the process of what's called recovery. But here's the deal. This isn't a story about sobriety. This is a story about discovery and curiosity. So this guy I went to see, he was like, Mike, what kind of man do you want to be? And the tears started rolling down my face, point blank. I had never heard that question before like I heard it that day. I knew I wasn't the person I wanted to be. I knew everything had to change, not just a small change, but a massive change. So there I was, sober, curious, and willing to change it all, but about three or four months into this journey, I just kind of felt incomplete. I, I could feel a void that was like really big and I couldn't quite put my finger on it and comprehend my, what it might be. And don't get me wrong, like it was awesome on so many levels, but I knew deep down that there was a huge bucket that I wasn't filling. And I needed to fill this damn thing as soon as possible or else it might derail my recovery efforts. So my mom again, and all of her wisdom, calls me up yet again and says, Mike, go for a run. Me and your sister do it, it helps with everything. And if you don't, the only person you're fooling is yourself. I remember the night well. Um, I lived in this lofted area above a bar that I used to drink at. And I see the people down there having a good time. And I'm thinking to myself, now is the time. It's like 10 p.m. So I went out for a few miles around my hometown of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and I felt like I could conquer the world. I was coughing stuff up and wheezing because I was still smoking cigarettes at that point in time, but oh my God, it, it was unreal. And I almost can't explain the feeling that I had experienced that evening. I had discovered the physical part to the mental part of changing everything. And from that day forward, I would never be the same, period. Running became my simulation of a perfect world. I became 100% obsessed with unlocking the purest form of running. I tried some races, was in some groups, ran every day, signed up for an Ironman, signed up for a marathon, studied the shoes, became obsessed with the shoes, and set this goal like, you know, to qualify for the Boston Marathon and the Ironman World Championships in Kona. But to be honest, all of these goals seemed a little bit crazy, but something about them, you know, was so big that they were like motivating. Um, most people love to tell me like it couldn't be done. And I was okay with that because if you're not really going to deliver on those things, then it can kind of get weird pretty quickly. Regardless, I knew deep down inside that I was meant to do something with this emotion and I needed to see where it could take me. I also knew that I needed to share this emotion with the world and attach it to the highest level of my identity as a human. So I sold my hot dog parlor that I had at the time um, and I started playing music to bridge the gap financially, acoustic tunes, uh, cover tunes in restaurants, casinos, bars, stuff like that. And uh, when I wasn't training during the day, I would go to this Starbucks on Ryan Street and just for hours I'd find myself like researching running shoes. I had to learn everything I could, it felt like, and I knew nothing so I had to learn it all. Again, I, I wasn't even sure why I was doing it at that point. And I kept having this thought, running shoes are for them to make, for them to design. You know, Hoka, Nike, Adidas, Brooks, Saucony, like all these great folks, they exist already. They're doing pretty good and you'll never be able to make it work, it's impossible. Doubt is an insidious killer, y'all. It will stop you in your tracks before you take the first step. And then I remembered what this guy said, the same guy I went to see. He said, do the thing that seems hardest or you don't want to do, and it will treat you right 90% of the time. And I knew I was looking face to face at probably the biggest and baddest challenge of my life, and that was the war on self-esteem, my own self-esteem. Who's to say I can't build the biggest and baddest shoe company in the world? Nobody. 
It's up to, for me to decide. Self-esteem comes from the self, not from others' opinions about the feasibility of the outcomes. Game on. That's when I decided to make the commitment to go all in. The same way I went into sobriety at full speed, I decided to move to Austin, get a job at a running store, and commit to finding a way, any way, to create the world's greatest running shoes. It wasn't logical, but I knew that I could find a way if I just kept the faith, and I knew that it wouldn't be easy, and people would think I'm crazy, but luckily at that point I was kind of used to those associated feelings. I didn't always know I would work my way up to what the brand has become to our meaningful group of runners at this point. It was being led by curiosity that got us here, and if you would ask me to do it all again knowing how hard it would be, I'd say hell no. I probably would have taken the hot dog money, bought a van, did the van life, maybe a traveling folk musician or something, but knowing how I've developed as a designer and what the brand stands for, all I want to do at this point is to amplify the message. It's like Bob Dylan said, Royal Albert Hall, to play it fucking loud. What's that message I want to amplify? It's pretty simple. The message is to apply for that school you might not get into. Start that restaurant you dreamt of starting. Ask that guy or that girl out who's out of your league. Lean into fear, lean into failure. Build that shoe company and make it the best in the world. That's what the race model stands for. I've risked literally everything for this shoe. It's a product of my sobriety, my curiosity, my potential, the financial risk to pay for the model and the production, all the hot dog money. That's what it is. It's not a spec on a page. Even though the specs are pretty badass, it's much bigger than that. Huge goals are a series of tiny victories strung together in a meaningful way. When you lace up these shoes, know that they were designed by an average Joe, just like you, who wanted to create the best of the best. I'm going for it, and I don't care if it takes me 50 years to qualify for the Ironman World Championships in Kona. I'm gonna do it in this shoe. Last year, I literally got to run the Boston Marathon for the first time in a pair of shoes that I designed. This pair. Can you imagine how that felt? It was insane. When you lace up these shoes, I hope you go big too. So this is my story of the race model. The race model is my story, I guess you could say. And I wanna know yours. If you have a story, I wanna know how running's saved your life. How running's changed your life, giving you meaning. Thanks for supporting my company. I'm eternally grateful, and I hope that I'm able to do this for as long as possible. I'll keep going if you keep going.